Aboriginal cultural heritage and activity tiers. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. The activity tiers are a new introduction with the Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Act of 2021 and the recently amended one only a couple of uh, days ago. Um, activity tiers have been developed um, to reduce um, harm to Aboriginal cultural heritage and also categorise activities that may harm Aboriginal cultural heritage. It's been divided into different industries. So you've got um, activities that are affecting waterways, you've got um, exploration and, and sort of investigation activities that are probably typical to mining, um, the mining industry. You've also got agricultural activities and natural resource activities. So obviously today we're going to focus on agricultural and natural resource activities as this is what affects our clients. Um, we're going to be looking at the different tiers and the different activities which fit within those tiers. So I thought I'd start by giving a bit of a background as to what the tier system is. So in order to identify activities that may harm Aboriginal cultural heritage, activities have been determined according to ground disturbance. So you have four tiers, you have exempt activities which are going to cause minimal if any disturbance um, to ground and then therefore any sort of risk or harm to Aboriginal cultural heritage. You've got tier one activities, which are typically low uh, ground disturbance activities. Tier two is kind of your moderate ground disturbance. And then obviously tier three is sort of moderate to high ground disturbance, typically like es um, ex excavation of ground. Um, so each of those activities have kind of been defined within um, the new act and also the code and the guidelines that have been developed um, to kind of coincide with the, the new act. And so when we talk about agricultural and natural resource um, activities, you look at sort of the tier one activities, and this can include, you know, controlling feral um, and pest and fauna. Um, it can also include managing weeds, but essentially it's defined and says that it's only activities that um, involve, you know, not removing any more than like four kilograms of material from the ground, not disturbing more than sort of 10 square metres um, of the ground. So very minimal activities. Your tier two are the ones that I suppose are more typical of farming, pastoral operations. So that's controlling feral or pest animals um, with digging or ex excavation. It's managing weeds and flora um, and um, does not involve sort of moving, uh, removing material that's more than 20 kilograms. So it's kind of a bit more than your tier one activity. Um, disturbing ground that's, you know, no greater than 200 metres squared. Um, and then you kind of get to the excavation. So you can excavate um, to a depth of about one metre, but anything above that kind of falls into the tier three activities. And tier three activities are definitely broader. So if you want to undertake um, uh, activities, agricultural activities on land that hasn't previously been used for agricultural activities, you want to establish a new farm, a new pastoral, you want to do any land clearing, um, tree planting, um, then this is your tier three activity. Um, and I'm talking about these activities because this determines the due diligence process you take, um, to undertake to determine whether your activity will cause a risk of harm to Aboriginal cultural heritage. That'll be the second video I do, but essentially I just wanted to really define those activities. Now, the, act the activity that you undertake and which tier it falls into also depends on what your next step is, which authorization pathway you go down before undertaking this activity. So if it's a tier one, um, it's a case of assessing, you know, under the due diligence assessment, assessing whether you can undertake that activity. There's an, it's, I suppose, a visual process searching on the Aboriginal culture directory. Your tier two and tier three require a bit more. For a tier two activity, you're required to get a permit or a sort of an uh, Aboriginal cultural heritage management plan in place to underta undertake that activity if there is Aboriginal cultural heritage on your land. Um, and a tier three is solely for a, a plan. You, you need more than a permit in order to undertake this activity. If there is Aboriginal cultural heritage on your land or there's a risk or a chance that there is Aboriginal cultural heritage on your property. Like I said at the beginning, these activities they're not just defined to agriculture, they apply to other industries as well. So if any ground disturbance activities that are occurring on a property. Um, so that's kind of a summary of those activities in this new tier system. And this will help us to navigate the due diligence assessment, which is a new addition. And I'll be discussing that in the next video. Thank you.